To create the instance for the leaf, I'll use a grid, a polygon mesh grid. I'm actually going to keep the number of UV subdivisions um, at 8, simply because I'm going to be adding some deformations a little bit later on through the ice process uh, driven by the ice tree, and the extra subdivisions are really going to help my deformation. So I've just temporarily linked the uh, U and V length by drag and dropping to create an expression. And I'm actually just going to have to move it over to the side here because the tree's in the way. Just remove the animation from there and that works out pretty well. I'm actually going to keep the operator around too in case I need it uh, to increase subdivisions later on. So I might take a little bit of a performance hit but I'm willing to do so. I'm going to give a texture projection to the grid and of course from above that would be an XZ projection so I'll get a texture projection XZ and there we go. If we actually look in the Explorer the texture support icon uh, sits as a child of the grid. Again I can't really freeze this texture support because I do have some information I need to keep around in the geometry operator. I suppose I could go in and freeze UVs from here, but you'll notice that this freeze button generally freezes the operator stack that uh, the construction history that sits in the modeling portion of the operator stack. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to take this grid object and apply a texture map to it, but first I need a material, so I'm going to jump into the materials manager and I will. Okay, the birch has its own shader here. I'll create a new shader. Maybe I'll create a fong shader. And we'll call this the leaf material. I want to make sure that the specularity is washed out quite a bit here. I don't want the leaf to be that bright. I'll give it a bit of a green specular and lower the decay uh, considerably. Take the luminance and saturation down a little bit as well. So I'm going to plug in a texture. So if I open up the Hide Show Preset Manager, just close the Explorer here for a moment and expand the Material Manager, I'm going to get a texture image node to pull in a texture map as well as the image node that holds the UVs. And if I put this into a texture decal, I'll plug the image output into the Fong's Diffuse input. Of course, need to assign this material to my grid, so I'll select the grid, right click on the material, assign to selection. And I'll also use the alpha channel of the texture I assign, so I'll double click on my image node and choose a texture map, so new from file. We should look for fall 6. It's a PSD file, and I believe it has an alpha channel that will work for us. So I actually want to use this alpha. Let me just right click, display all channels. And I can use the alpha by double clicking on the Fong preset and on the transparency tab I can use alpha here. And I can actually use the alpha from a texture map that I plug in. So if I plug this into the transparency section as well, I get the alpha. It's incorrect in this case, but one of the nice things is being able to invert that alpha channel. It's a very quick way of just using an object with alpha without having to bring in extra image nodes. So this is out, uh, working out really nicely. Uh, the next thing I'm going to look at doing here is moving the center pivot of this grid object to the base and rotating it so that I have a Y up orientation. I generally like to use a local Y up orientation because it aligns with the tree object's surface normals and for me I usually visualize the surface normals of an object. So if I actually go in and uh, look at the polygon normals, they're a little bit large. If I scale down the center pivot, oops, I usually visualize those normals as Y or the uh, point normals as Y. So I'll move into center pivot mode and I'll flip the center on its side 90 degrees and I'll slide the pivot down to the base. In fact in this case I'd probably want to move the pivot to where the 
stem of the leaf is, the base of the, the leaf. There we go, so we get a nice attachment point. All right, that's looking pretty good. I could uh, set a neutral pose on that if I wanted to, to zero it out, but uh, this, this will do fine, I'm pretty certain. Maybe uh, what I can do just to lock in here, if I do want to freeze things at this point, is uh, just add in a little bit more geometry. So we'll just give it 12 and 12, just a bit of an overkill for this tutorial anyways, and then I can freeze the whole thing. All right, that's looking a lot better. So I'm going to, of course, instance this leaf on the trees. So I'll take the leaf. And I'll make sure if I go back into ice here, grab the point cloud. I will bring in an instance geometry compound, set instance geometry, and plug it into the execute on emit port as we're sort of prompted to do here. Double click on the set instance geometry node to pick an object, so I'll use the explorer to do that and I'll pick the grid. In fact, before I pick the grid, let me just give it a name. So I'll call that my Leaf Geo. So if I double click on the Instance Geometry Compound again and pick my Leaf Geo, there we go. We have our leaves instanced along the branches. The alignment isn't looking very good right now. It needs to be far more random but at this point, I'm going to look at simply just kind of getting a size for these leaves as well. I think something like that would work. Maybe, maybe a little larger. 0.5. So that'll be our benchmark. We'll kind of work from 0.5 as our size and do some randomness around that point. So we've got the leaves instanced and again another one of our problems taken care of. But we still have many more challenges to solve.